every time my mother my father or my friends they say what are you even doing what is blockchain or what is bitcoin or what is cryptocurrencies so i have started traveling the country to explain to people who are not aware of this to the rest of us what is a blockchain like if this is such a complicated thing uh, please let us uh, please explain it to me so this is what i do to start with what is blockchain let's understand the problem first so imagine my friend is on a vacation and he calls me and says hey mohit i have run out of money i need some money can you transfer the money to me and i'll say okay cool i'll do that so i immediately call my bank manager and say hey please transfer this money to my friend and the bank manager goes and makes this entry in the in the register he says from you to joe from my account to joe's account goes $1000 that's it that's one entry that he makes and my $1000 now belongs to joe what just happened my bank manager didn't take money and went on to joe and deposited the money he just made an entry so i'll go back and say to joe hey bro i have sent the money so you can withdraw it and he'll he'll he, he'll have that money with him so the thing is money is just an entry in the database money is nothing a lot of interesting things or the important things in our life are just the entry in the database so now the wise men started asking if money or these important things are just an entry in the databases why do we need banks or someone else to manage to keep track of this database can we do it among ourselves if joe and i have to transact with it, uh, with each other is there a way that we do not have to go through the th third party because what if the bank manager misheard me when i was said i want to transfer 1000 he he could have misheard me or he he could have heard me right but miswrote while making the entry or he was just a, a, the best friend of my friend so what would happen then he deliberately was dishonest and try in try to steal money from me when you give the power to someone else he can do all these three things um, so these three things can they be avoided for centuries now we have been putting all our eggs in just one basket and that to someone else's so this is the problem that blockchain solves blockchain is nothing but just a way to maintain the same database that our bank does but without the banks so here's how it works so this is the situation imagine there are 10 people these 20 then these 10 guys say we want to manage this database among ourselves without the banks here's the situation each of these have an empty file folder with them and a blank page and a pen with them so what will happen some they'll write something on the um, on these pages they'll put away the page in the file folder they'll bring bring out a new page and this process will keep on going and this file folder will keep will have a lot of pages in it eventually making the same database that our bank has so here's how it how it will work whenever an important announcement whenever an important event happens in the network they it, an announcement is made for example if number 2 wants to send 10 dollars to number 9 she'll make an announcement loud and clear Hey I am number 2 I want to send my 10 dollars to number 9 everyone will check if number 2 has enough money to send to number 9 and if she has everyone make, will make an entry in their own blank pages that they have something like this from number 2 to number 9 goes 10 dollars very similar looking entry that the bank does but in their own pages so everyone has their own pages now this process keeps on going another another un transaction another announcement another entry this pro this process keeps on going until all of them run out of uh, runs out of the space on the page now the current page is over you cannot make more entries on the current page so you'll have to file this page in the file folder bring out a new page uh, repeat the whole process again and this goes on forever but here's the whole crux of blockchain comes in how do you file the page in the file folder there has to be two conditions that has to be met one when filing the page in the file folder we have to make sure that everyone all of these 10 people had the same contents on their page because the three things someone might have misheard someone might have misread or someone was trying to just be plain dishonest so we have to make sure that everyone has the same content on their pages and number two when the page is filed in the file folder it cannot be modified ever like ever not tomorrow not next week not next month not next not next year not next decade ever so how do we do it this is the whole magic of blockchain this is completed by something we call a hash function uh, mathematically but to understand for this session we'll just call it a magic machine so this is a mathematical function but here's the properties of this machine it takes some input on the left hand side and it gives some output on the right hand side here's how input and output looks like if you give a very sensible looking input on the left hand side say the number 4 you will get a very gibberish looking word say dcba on the right hand side 
it doesn't make any sense how 4 goes to DCBEA. It doesn't make any sense. But every time you will pass 4, you will get DCBEA. So if you pass 26, just 22 more, num uh, plus 4 plus 22, but you will get entirely different looking number, which is like 94 CAT. This word on the right hand side can also include numbers, as you can see. So you pass some meaningful data and you'll get some gibberish looking data on the, on the, uh, in the output side. But it won't make any sense how do these two th things are related. So we'll use this machine. So the property of this machine is, there are two properties. One, every time you'll pass the same number, say the number 4 or 26, you'll get the same data every time, today, tomorrow, next decade, all, always. This is property number one. Property number two, if I give you the output, if I say I'll give you 94C8E, and you have to calculate the input. There's no reverse magic machine where you can just pass in 94C80 and you'll get 26 in the, uh, as the output. So here's how we'll use this magic machine to seal the contents of the page and to make sure that everyone has the same contents on their pages. So this is the puzzle that we'll have to solve. So, the, so if I'll ask you, if I give you this puzzle where you have to find the input such that on the right-hand side you get a word that starts with three leading zeros, how do you do that? There is no reverse magic machine. You cannot just feed 000 on the, uh, as the input and get uh, the word, the input, the, uh, the required input. So the only way to do it is guess. You keep guessing numbers until you reach to a word that, until, until you reach to a number that when fed to this magic machine yields a word that, that starts with three leading zeros. Here's how this, this uh, solving this puzzle will help us seal the contents of the page. So here's. Here's the, so you'll start with 217, then 9,000 something, then 18,000 something, 11,000 something. Eventually you'll find a word that will some, which will like 72,533, which will, when passed in this magic machine, will yield 000CA. That's how you solve this puzzle. And this is, this puzzle will help us solve the problems of the money with the banks. So now if I have to seal the content, the content that I want to seal, Suppose there's a page on which there's a large one number written, which is 20893, just one number, and I, and I have to seal this page. How do I do it? I'll have, I, this is the problem that I'll solve. I'll say, now this time you have two inputs. On one side, I'm giving you the contents that I want to seal, and the second input is you have to calculate a random number. When we add these two numbers and feed, it to, feed in this magic machine, you must get a word that starts with three leading zeros. How do you do it again? You guess. So probably, you'll find a number like 21191, when you add in to 20893 and fit it to this magic machine, you'll get 00078. So this is how you seal the page. So you have this big number written on the page, so you just put a seal on this page, 21191. If ever I have to check if the contents of the page are modified, the only thing that I have to do is, I'll say after 10 years, I'll just quickly add these two numbers up, fit it to the magic machine and see if it yields 000 uh, something uh, and then something. If it does, the contents of the page are still okay, are not changed, are not modified, and I can, and I can trust the contents of the page. If it doesn't give 000 and then something else, I can be sure that the contents of the page were compromised, it, they were modified, and I, then they are useless to me, and I'll just throw them away. So in our case, the first input looks like the contents of the page, which is the list of transactions. So I'll take the list of transactions as the first input, and I'll have to find the one random number, which when appended to this uh, list of transactions, will yield a word that starts with 000. So here's the same situation. When, we ran out of, when everyone ran out of the space on the page, everyone started solving this puzzle. Every time my page got over, I started finding this random number, hey, such that when we append this random, random number to the page and we pass into this magic machine, should give 000 and then something else. Suppose the number five guy was the person who found the, uh, the who found the number, and he said, "Hey guys, listen, I have found the ceiling number, and it is and it is 912574." He announces it to the whole network, and everyone quickly verifies. Everyone quickly takes their content of the page append 912574 and feed it on this feed in this magic machine to see if it gives 000 and then something else if it does it means everyone has the same contents of the page everyone has same content because everyone this number is solving the problem of everyone now what if someone doesn't have someone doesn't get the 000 on the right hand side suppose number 8 says listen guys i see that you go you all of are getting the same number but somehow it is not working out for me 
So again, three things could have happened. Either number eight, misheard some transaction, when, uh, misheard some announcement. Or number two, he heard it right, but he miswrote while making the record of the transaction. Or number three, he was just trying to give a favor to someone and he was just trying to be plain dishonest. Either of these three cases, whole of the network will say to number eight, hey, listen, we don't care if you were dishonest or if it was a mistake. We'll give you benefit of doubt. So you have two ways to do it. Either you do not do anything, you just be in your own world and we'll stop acknowledging your presence in the network and we'll stop acknowledging your announcements from here on. Or you throw up your page because you also believe it is something that is that not the entire network agrees upon. You throw up your page, copy the contents from someone else's page whose, uh, whose uh, page gives the three leading zeros and then, then file it in the file folder away. So every time this is the process, announcements are made, everyone writes, Someone, uh, everyone tries to solve the, uh, this cryptographic puzzle. Everyone tries to fi find this random number. Whoever finds it, he announces it to the, to the entire network. And everyone then syncs. Everyone says, this is working for me. This is not working for me. If this is working for me, well, if it is not working for me, I'll copy from someone else's, uh, the contents of someone else's page, and then I'll put away the file folder. The entire thing is, at the end of every page, it is guaranteed that everyone will have the same contents on the page. And because the behavior of how the ceiling number works, the contents of the page can never be changed. So slowly, over a period of time, this stack of pages of one after another, after another, after another, will eventually form uh, this database that we have with the banks. So this page that I'm, bar uh, that, that I'm again, uh, uh, again and again calling the page is actually uh, called a block. And the chain of blocks eventually, eventually forms the blockchain as we know it. And this is like the general thing that you that that is in the idle scenario, but in real scenario, a blockchain looks something like this, where these green pages and blue pages are the disagreements in the network. When I say, hey, this is not working out for me, but I still do not trust the rest of you, so I'll be on my own way and I'll keep finding my own numbers. So in any blockchain system, there are multiple branches forking off, there are multiple chains forking off, but the best chain, the honest chain, is the chain which is the longest chain because the longest chain has the most effort done towards it. If I'm the just one guy in the uh, network of 10 people, I'll be able to only build two or three pages while the entire network will be able to build 20 or 30 pages together. So the longest chain is always the honest chain and that, and that is what the blockchain is. In very simple terms, it's just an announcing, recording, sealing, filing away. Announcing, recording, sealing, and filing away. That's why it's kind of a big deal. Because when I say my name is Mohit, how can I say my name is Mohit? Because somewhere it is written that this guy's name, who was born on 2nd of November, has the name Mohit. When I say this is my home, how do I know this is my home? Because in some database, it is written that this land, this coordinates belong to this particular guy whose name is Mohit. So all of the important things in our life are just the entries in the databases, just that. But then why do we need these people to maintain our data databases? Can we trust these strangers? And blockchain give, makes it possible in the entire humanity. Uh, this time with blockchain, we can trust the strangers more than someone familiar. So that's what blockchains are, and thank you.